Can you help me work in the United States? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, DC. We are shooting today's video to make clear what the rules are for immigrants who want to work inside the United States. We're gonna talk about working on a temporary basis. We're gonna talk about working on a long-term basis where you're hopefully getting an employment-based green card. And then we're gonna talk about the role of the immigration lawyer inside all those procedures. In order to understand how everything fits together, the first thing you need to know is that immigrants can't work inside the United States without authorization. If you don't have permission in the United States to work, you can't work. That's a basic rule of immigration law. So what you need to do then is to check the rules and the laws to see who can and when can they work. Another basic understanding that you have to know is that you can't just show up inside the United States and expect to get a benefit. You have to have an actual method of coming to the United States, of coming legally, and that usually involves sponsorship by a family member or an employer. This is a fundamental truth that also impacts your ability to work inside the United States. You might be asking yourself, does the United States have a merit-based system where I can just come and show my credentials and get a work visa? That works in countries like Canada, but we don't have that system here in the United States. You can't self-petition in most instances, unless you are a Nobel laureate or you have some extraordinary or exceptional ability, you're not going to be able to sponsor yourself for a work visa. So in Canada, you can get lawful permanent resident status simply based on the fact that you check enough boxes on what they're looking for and you can get residence that way. Not so here, not in the United States. In the United States, you generally need an employer or a family member to sponsor you. Those are the main ways that you're gonna be able to come and work in the United States. Your best bet, if you are serious about coming to the United States and working as an immigrant, is to come to the United States on an F1 student visa. If you come on an F1 student visa at the end of your studies, you can work on what's called optional practical training, OPT. Optional practical training allows you to continue your F1 visa status while you're working for an employer. It's a really great program in that it allows an employer to watch you, to work with you, and to interact with you, and to see if they want to sponsor you for a H-1B visa, for a work visa. It's a great temporary, long-term job interview, basically. You're, you're working for the employer for a long period of time, at least a year. If you're in a STEM field, you can work on OPT for up to three years total. So if you are doing a science, technology, engineering, or math program, then you're going to be able to stay on your F1 and work for that employer for up to three years, which is great because that gives them three chances to sponsor you for an H-1B. And the H-1B employment visa is really what it's all about. That's how most foreign nationals, most immigrants, get to work legally in the United States. An H-1B visa is available for people who work in a specialty occupation. So this is one in which a specific degree is required to do that, and that it's of a specialized nature. So think about computer programmers, accountants, doctors. There are many of those working on H-1Bs. So if you are in one of those fields, or if you want to study in one of those fields, the best plan of attack is to come to the United States on an F-1, to then go on OPT, and work for an employer and hopefully get them to sponsor you for that H-1B. The reason I mention the F-1 visa is because it is extremely unlikely that a company inside the United States is going to get a resume from someone overseas who doesn't have a visa, who hasn't been to the United States, who has no history with that company. It's very unlikely that the employer is going to go through the headache and the expense and the uncertainty of the H-1B process and to basically go to bat for you. That's why it's important for you to come on a student visa and to get that OPT so you can make those connections and let them see how valuable you are. We receive an amazing number of contacts from people overseas who basically send us their resume, send us their academic or work credentials, and say, Jim, can you find me a job? Or Jim, am I eligible for a visa? Or Jim, can I self-petition for a work visa? And that's why we're making this video. We want you to understand how hard it is, and how long the road is, and how unlikely it is you're going to be able to do it by yourself. So your best bet, get that student visa, focus on finding an employer, and then going down that route. Because the thing is, H-1Bs are really expensive. You're gonna, they're gonna spend thousands of dollars in sponsorship. They're going to have to go through the uncertainty of the lottery. 
They're going to have to pay the prevailing wage, which means that the government sets what wage you get, not the employer. So there's many reasons why employers don't necessarily like H-1Bs. And it's just not reasonable to think that if you're sitting overseas in Sierra Leone or Poland or Australia, that you're going to be able to make enough of a contact with the HR department or with a vice president of the company that they're going to want to go through that hassle for you. It might happen. It does happen every now and then. But that's usually when someone has a really, really rare specialty. Like we did one one time for someone who had a mining background and they needed to work at an upper level at a mine and they had that experience. And that was enough to get the employer to go through the H-1B process for someone that they had basically never met. But for the most part, this isn't going to work. So don't plan on that. Don't think it's going to work. And there's really no reason to send me your resume or your credentials if that's what you're hoping to have happen. So an H-1B is good for three years, and you can get it renewed for up to three more years, so a total of six years in H-1B status. At the end of that process, or at some time during that process, your employer might talk to you about sponsoring you for an employment-based green card. And this is really the whole shoot and match. This is what you want. You want to find an employer who's going to sponsor you for an employment-based green card. Again, it's a hassle, it's expensive, and it's sort of like the H-1B program on steroids in that the employer has to ask the Department of Labor for a formal prevailing wage determination. They have to do research um, from the Labor of Bureau statistics to figure out what you should be paid for the area in which you're working and the job that you have. Then you have to do a good faith recruitment where the employer has to post the job, post it in the newspaper of general circulation and in other trade journals, and take all resumes and see if there are any American citizens or lawful permanent residents who can do that job. If not, then they can go ahead and file for a petition for the alien worker. It's a big hassle. Most employers don't want to do it, and they sure as heck aren't going to do it for someone that they haven't met. And that's why you need to go through that H-1B process that I described earlier in this video. There are a very limited number of people who can file for a employment-based green card without a sponsor, but that's very unusual, and it doesn't happen all that often. So if you want to work in the United States, the lessons you need to learn from this video are you need a sponsor. You need to have a good uh, educational background and a job prospect. It has to be a job that's hot, that people want, and that they're having a hard time finding people for. Those are the people who are more likely to get an employment-based uh, H-1B or a green card um, based on employment. So those are the things you need to know. I just want to end by saying one other thing. We are an immigration law firm. We help employers and we help employees when they want to have that foreign national work inside the United States. We're happy to do it. We work on those cases all the time and we love working on them. But what we don't do is match employers with employees. We don't help employees find an employer. There's no reason to send us your resume. There's no reason to send us your uh, credentials or your identity documents. We don't need any of that stuff. And we can't help you find someone to sponsor you. We can't help you find a job in which the employer is going to be willing to sponsor you for a work visa or for an employment-based green card. That's up to you. Our job is once you and the employer have connected, then we do our piece. I will end this with a story. One time a young man from India wanted me to go talk to his employer about the H-1B process. And I thought that he had already explained it all to them. But in fact, he hadn't said a word to them. And this was a concrete company. So he wanted this concrete company to sponsor him for an H-1B. And he asked me to come to a meeting. And I've been to many meetings like this. I've talked to employers. I've talked to employees. I talk about these topics in the video all the time. Well, he didn't have the courtesy to tell me that he hadn't told his employer. And the employer was wearing these big boots. And he basically threw me out of the office. I thought he was going to literally kick me in the ass. Luckily, he did not. But that, that story shows what the difference is between what my role is and your role is. It's your job to find the employer. It's your job to talk about sponsorship. I'm happy to explain things, and we're happy to talk to employers overall, but we are not the ones to make those connections. We're not the ones to, quote unquote, convince the employer to sponsor you. That's all on you, brother and sister. That's not us. So I hope this makes sense. I hope you've learned a thing or two about coming to the United States and working, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, and if you actually want to get started, you have an employer, give us a call, 314-961-8200. Email us, info at hackinglawpractice.com. 
You can also join us in our Facebook group, which is called Immigrant Home. If you like this video, we ask that you please share it out on social and that you also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that whenever we make a new video like this one or whenever we go live on our Immigration Answers show, which is usually three or four days a week, you'll be the first to learn about it and you'll be able to contact me and ask me immigration questions that you might have. Thanks a lot and have a great day.